For the past eight years, a civilian population of roughly 500,000 men, women and children have been attacked non-stop and felt the terror of over 8,000 rockets. Do you know what it might feel like to live in a missile zone? There are many harsh realities that the people of Israel face daily, and there's no better time than now to support them in every way we can. The target of the enemy is to destroy the Jewish state, and we must do all we can to support Israel. But what is it like to truly live within the range of enemy missiles? Hi. And welcome to this episode of Inside the Epicenter with Joel Rosenberg, a podcast of the Joshua Fund, a ministry dedicated to blessing Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus. I'm Carl Muller, Executive Director of the Joshua Fund, and today we want to present Leah Malul's account of living in that missile zone and the challenge that this poses to her, her family, and the people of Israel who also all live in the missile zone. Let's take a listen. Honorable brothers and sisters, I am addressing you not only as the public affairs director and the spokesperson of the Basilei Medical Center, but also as a spokesperson of my own family, who in 1770 decided they were an Orthodox Hasidic family who believed in all their Jewish genes, that their home is not in the diaspora, but rather in Eretz Israel. The land of the Jewish people, the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the land of the prophets Isaiah and Zechariah, and the land where we all hope the Messiah our savior will come soon. They were an ultra-Orthodox family who felt in their genes that Europe is not their homeland. It's not the homeland of the Jewish people. They believed that they must control their destiny and wandered back to the land of the biblical prophet Zion. They left behind a very comfortable urban life to renew the Jewish settlement in the Holy Land. They found a bleak, barren land, a demolished land. Remember, it was 1770, a desolate land. Life was not easy. They suffered from poverty, from hunger, from diseases, from earthquakes, from hostile local population, but they did not despair and did not give up. They held on tightly to the land and their mission to renew Jewish life. Their hardship were rewarded. More and more Jews from all around Europe followed their footsteps. Jews who had escaped from pogroms in Russia, England and France. Sephardic Jews whose ancestors were expelled from Spain, like my husband's family, who decided it was time to leave Europe and return to their homeland. History proved that the ones that returned to Zion were saved. The Holocaust proved them right. I'm telling you the story of my ancestors because my family, my husband, My four children, which two of them are currently serving the IDF, are living in the city of Ashkelon, the city of the biblical hero Samson, where for the past eight years, we have been struggling to stay alive under a barrage of vicious rocket attack. For the past eight years, a civilian population of roughly 500,000 men, women, and children have been attacked non-stop and felt the terror of over 8,000 rockets. I cannot believe 
that there is any other nation in the world that would agree to live not for eight years, not for eight months, and not even for eight days under this kind of rocket attack. For eight years, the government and the people of Israel were very, very patient and did not react to the unprovoked terror attack against them. Israel decided that enough is enough. And finally, took action to defend her land, herself, and its people. It is very sad that during those eight years of suffering and hardship, the international community and the United Nations did not raise their voice. They were silent. And now, with no shame, they demoralize us by telling us that our reaction is not proportional. <laughs> the only true friend that supported Israel and justified its action for self-defense was the United States of America. <laughs> the real and only true friend of Israel. Indeed, here and now, I feel that I'm among real friends, among brothers, among family, among the people that will go out and tell the true story. Now I want to share with you the story of our life during those eight years. I want to tell you about our terrified children who will for the rest of their life carry the scars of living in a war zone. I want to tell you about our women that feel for themselves, their husbands, their families. I want to tell you about our fighting men who while fighting the vicious enemy feel for their families more than themselves. And I know I've got one of them, two of them in the army. You have to imagine Eight years in which thousands upon thousands of adults and children are suffering from post-trauma stress disorder, which 20% of them are turning to be chronically ill. And this has become a very, un, it's an unbearable burden on the society. A whole generation who will struggle to live a normal life and grow up to have a promising future. A whole generation that, like me, when I'm walking in the streets of San Diego and I hear the sirens of the police cars and ambulance, I know that I have 15 seconds to run for cover because that's what we have from the minute the siren starts coming. 50 seconds that you don't know who to schlep with you first, your elderly, your children, your pets, yourself. But then, after a few seconds, I realized I'm in San Diego. <laughs> Imagine, day after day, year after year, a weary expectation and exhaustion takes over. Slowly, the souls become exhausted from seeing the slaughter and the horror that is calmly surrounding it, as though something of this nature could become commonplace, and now has become commonplace, normal. As Anna then said, it became the banality of the evil. We must not reach that point. Reaching this point means surrender to the enemy, we will never allow our enemies to destroy our souls, to destroy our spirit, or to dehumanize us. Here among you, I feel that we brothers and that we all understand and share the suffering of the Jewish people in Israel. In the middle of the chaos, there is an island of sanity and hope. 
the Barzilai Medical Center. It's a 500-bed general hospital that serves 500,000 residents. It also has its own school of nursing and is a uh, teaching hospital affiliated with the Ben Gurion University in the Negev. The Barzilai Medical Center is located in Ashkelon, the southernmost city along the Mediterranean Sea, only six miles from the border of the Gaza district. This makes our hospital the nearest referral center for all the injured from this district and within the rocket range. The spiritual leader of the Hezbollah, the infamous Sheikh Nasrallah, sadly explained the sick logic why he believes that the forces of terror will win their holy war. And he said, we place as much value on death as you Jews place on life. My response is that the power of good will always overcome evil and prevail. Our verse of the day today is found in Psalm 125, verse 2. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Our prayer requests today are to number one, pray for the people of Israel, that they are protected from every harm and from the constant harassment of evil. And second, Pray for all the neighbors and neighboring countries around Israel that they come to know Jesus as their Savior. The Barzillai Medical Center is committed to treat every human being who reaches our threshold in need of care with the highest standard of care and love. At times of conflict or on a usual day, you will find a Muslim Palestinian from Gaza lying in bed next to IDF soldiers and next to civilians injured from the rocket attacks. Unfortunately, the hospital is extremely prone to continuous Palestinian terrorism with daily Qassams, Russian and Iranian Grad missiles landing even on the hospital ground. This situation requires the hospital staff to be continuously prepared and able to deliver the best medical treatment to all people. During the last war, Operation Kastled, the highest state of alert was declared in the Brazilian Medical Center. All hospital staff was recruited. 80% of our patients were sent home or to other hospitals because we didn't have sufficient place to treat them under attack. Only 20% critically ill stayed in the hospital. The emergency room was moved and Joel was there and he saw it with all his team. It was moved to an underground shelter. And we were ready to treat mass casualty event, large number of injured people, including chemical warfare. During the three weeks of Operation Castled, 875 rockets within three weeks were launched to the area. And Barzilai Medical Center treated 628 soldiers and civilians. The Shabbat prior to Passover is called Shabbat Agadol. The source of the term is unclear as it is not found in the Bible. Though in the Middle Ages, a number of authorities occupied themselves with explaining the origin of the term. One approach sees Shabbat Agadol as originated with a special portion that comes from the prophets, especially the book of Malachi, which refers to the day in the future which will be gadol, meaning great. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. 
The prophet speaks of the day of redemption in the future. Passover is a holiday which represents this day of redemption. The Bible story of Egypt is not just a story. This is history. The Bible story of the Egypt enslavement of the Jews is history. It's true. As we look back at the intervention of the hand of God into the life of our people, bringing freedom and salvation from the bondage of Egypt, we have hope for our future, knowing that He, Almighty God, has a good plan for us that He will fulfill. I want to thank Joel Rosenberg, the Joshua Fund, and all of you, my dear evangelical brothers and sisters, from the bottom of my heart, although the Jews were saved from the hands of Egypt a few thousand years ago, we are still today waiting for the redemption of the children of Moses. We are still today waiting for the Messiah to bring peace and tranquility. We still have to continue and pray because working in a hospital next to the border with Gaza and continuing to save lives is dependent upon unique doctors and nurses that work days and nights. Working under these kind of conditions and continue to save lives is truly dependent on miracles from God. Working under these kind of conditions and continue to save life is being dependent on your prayers. Working under these kind of conditions and continue to save lives is being dependent on your support. Extremist and fanatic Muslims have a common goal. One target and one target only. And this is to destroy the Jewish state and the common values that we as Jews and Christians share. Being who you are, dear brothers and sisters, is one of the great motivators that gives us the strength to continue and guard our holy land against the evil forces. We feel your love and we appreciate deeply your courage for standing up and speaking out on our behalf. We appreciate your prayers and we truly thank you for your support that we so desperately need. I'll end up blessing you with, may you go from strength to strength. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on this special episode as we explored the impact of living in the missile zone and the impact it has on, on women and children and families in the epicenter. If you found this podcast really valuable, please get in touch with us. Let us know who you are. Do you have a question you want Joel to answer? Go to the joshuafund.com and click on contact us. Your feedback is incredibly valuable as we develop this podcast. And as always, you can check out our show notes for anything you heard on this podcast that you'd like more information on. For Joel Rosenberg and the entire Joshua Fund ministry team, I'm Carl Muller. Thanks for listening to this episode of Inside the Epicenter with Joel Rosenberg. Hi, this is Joel Rosenberg, founder and chairman of the Joshua Fund, and I've got exciting news. In 2023, I'm inviting you, on behalf of our entire board and staff, to come to the Holy Land, to come to Israel on the next prayer and vision tour. This is the 75th anniversary of the prophetic rebirth of the modern state of Israel back in 1948. And what is God doing here? It's amazing, spiritually, economically, in so many ways, there's been so much growth, so much progress, but the best is yet to come. And we want you to see it. We want you to walk where Jesus walked. 
We want you to see where the apostles ministered. We want you to see where people's lives were transformed by the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. We want you to see this city where Jesus died and rose again and where he's coming back, I hope soon. But in the meantime, come to Israel with the Joshua Fund. You can learn more about the trip, the itinerary, the cost, all the details at joshuafund.com. But sign up quickly, because I think this thing is gonna fill up fast. The Prayer and Vision Tour of Israel in the fall of 2023. I hope to see you there. Hey, I'm Joel Rosenberg. On your left, you'll find some videos we've chosen specifically for you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.